All right, this should be a really fun test. And what we're doing today is slingshot versus gun. Slingshot versus gun. How powerful is a slingshot? And this is, some people like to call them uh, wrist rockets because they're a little bit different than traditional slingshots. But, you know, this is your basic $12 slingshot you can get pretty much anywhere. And steel balls for ammunition. And what I'm going to compare to is 38 Short Colt. 38 Short Colt is one of the oldest if not the oldest center fire handgun cartridge out there so because of that it is sort of a low-end weak round but it is still a legitimate firearm cartridge and what we're doing here today is 38 versus 38 38 caliber slingshot and 38 caliber handgun um, these are 3 8 inch steel balls which come out to 0.375 diameter the original 38 short colt actually was the same 0.375 diameter but modern 38 short colts they load them inside the case instead of a healed bullet so they're actually closer to 36 caliber but but still they're both considered 38 caliber 38 caliber and i've written down here 53 grains that's what these weigh these balls weigh 53 grains i weighed them on my scale the bullets in the 38 short colt are 125 grains so a lot heavier but they are lead steel is less dense than lead so this is going to be a really fun test we're going to go through the chronograph and see what kind of energy what kind of power we're getting with a slingshot and we're going to compare that to an actual firearm cartridge so i have a little bit of a different setup here uh for the slingshot and then we're gonna to have to move over to our typical firearm target probably and what we're going to do we always do this we go through the juggernaut box which contains a one and three quarter inch pack of bologna that kind of simulates like flesh uh, or a pectoral muscle size. We're covered by four layers of denim and we are followed by one quarter inch medium density fiber board. And then after that, we have some water jugs. How it normally compares to ballistics gel is after going through the pack, back of the first jug is about nine inches, jug two, 12 inches, jug three, 15 inches, and so forth. So it's going to be interesting. And as one of my subscribers, Fud Martin, pointed out, if I can't get that slingshot to go through this pack, I should probably turn it around the other way and hit it from this side because this would kind of simulate like a skull shot on something, and this would be the inside of that. So that might be an interesting way to test that if I can't get it to go through this, because I have my doubts that it will actually go through this. So let's get started with the test and see how slingshot compares to gun. A few things here. I taught myself to shoot slingshot when I was a little kid, and I actually went left-handed instead of right-handed because my dexterity, for whatever reason, with holding these balls in the pouch was always a little bit greater with my left hand. Uh, interesting the way I did it. I normally shoot from about five yards with the firearms, but I am gonna shoot right up close here to try to get as much much velocity as possible and without uh, you know wrecking my chronograph. That's why I got that glass shield there. Uh, but we'll see what we get for velocity. I know it's kind of hard to see through this glass on the other camera, but we'll see what we get. No read. I may have to put the lights on this thing. It might just have a little bit of an issue reading it just because they are steel balls. 206. We got a reading. Not bad. Not bad. 206. Interesting thing about this, it's going to vary by the shooter. <laughs> no read. I'm going to try to get five of these red to see what we got. Two hundred and five. Very consistent compared to the last one. So that's something to work with. That's good. No read. <laughs> Two hundred and two, still relatively consistent. Only wants to read every other shot for some reason. I may not get another reading. Accuracy is not too bad from that range. <laughs> and considering I haven't really fired one in 30 years. Two hundred and two. Consistency is its name. 
try to get one more reading. That'll be five shot average. 220, that's that's faster. So, but still relatively consistent. Now let's pull out one of the weakest uh, actual firearm cartridges and see how that compares. All right, I'm backing up a little bit with this, five yards from the target. And if you might've noticed, this is actually a 357 Magnum snub nose revolver. 38 short Colt and long Colt will safely chamber and fire in any 357 mag or 38 special revolver, but it is different than 38 Smith and Wesson. 38 short Colt, 38 long Colt. Uh, so let's see what we get here for velocity and accuracy. 595, 594, 622, 567, 524. So this is actually less consistent overall for its velocity compared to the slingshot. Interesting. Now let's hit the juggernaut box and let's just see what, what we might get. I'm going to go with the slingshot first. All right, first up we have the slingshot. As you can see, I'm wearing a, a motorcycle helmet with a glass cover. I want as much protection as possible in case this um, ricochets. 500. All right, let's see what we get. 500. <laughs> it did bounce back and ricochet just a little bit. Try to hit it harder. And again, it bounced up. So we're going to flip this over and see if that helps. All right, this is where it might get dangerous with an actual ricochet. Hit it dead center, but it just dented that fiberboard. I'm going to do it one more time. Same thing. Let's take a look at this thing. It's actually a pretty impressive dent. I definitely would not want to get hit with this um, at all. I'm going to pull this out here. And this is medium density fiberboard, which is a lot more dense than like plywood. So it's, it's pretty impressive stuff. And one of these dents really did, if I can get the light right, did do a lot of damage to it. That would certainly cause some pain. Um, but we did not get through the denim at all. So that's what you get with that. Uh, let's try the 38 short Colt and see how that compares. All right, even if we can get through the baloney pack and fiberboard itself, that suggests a very lethal hit with this round of ammunition. Uh, so let's see what we get here. And there's definitely water leaking. So thus we went right through this thing. We went through the baloney pack, we went through the fiberboard like it was nothing. And it looks like it's either tumbling or starting to expand because it's a soft lead bullet. Interesting. Our first jug is just filled with fiberboard and denim pieces, all kinds of it. Our second jug It has a very tiny dent out the back, and the bullet is in here. And what we actually have is a flattened bullet nose here. This is going to compare to about 11 or 12 inches of ballistics gel. So for being a round nose, that's actually pretty perfect for a self-defense round. You know, not very much penetration, but enough expansion or deformation is what the correct word might be. That's pretty impressive overall for the amount of recoil we had here. One more test, I had a request uh, to shoot these at 50 yards. I have no idea if I can even hit my steel tank at 50 yards, that's my normal target, but we will see if I can actually hit that at 50 yards with a slingshot and 
a short Colt. All right, this is where I shoot from 50 yards, so we'll see what we get with the gun. Not sure what just happened. A little over it. Over again. All right, I think I have a few more of these. All right, let's try that slingshot. All right, I got the slingshot with those 38 caliber steel balls. I have no idea what to expect here. <laughs> I don't know where to hold. It's been a while. I know they'll shoot that far though. Let's see what happens. Ooh, actually, it was really close. It was about the right amount of pull and, and hold over the target. It's going just over. It's really, really close, actually. And why I'm still wearing these, I don't know. Uh, I notice I can't hear anything. That's why. Again, it's so close. It's the right height and everything. It's just going... That time it was to the left. The other times were to the right. This is close. I think I got <laughs> I got something downrange. It's 50 yards out, so it's hard to tell. That was funny. Oh, the same spot as I hit before. It, it, it's going just slightly to the right. Barely. That time I pulled it very far to the left. That's the difficulty with Shooting left-handed being right-handed, right-eyed. It's more of an instinct thing. That was really close. Actually hits pretty hard. Oh, I keep hitting the same spot about six inches to the right. But I mean I'm going totally instinctual on this. I'm not even really aiming because I can't pull it this way. I'm going like this. I hit the plexiglass. Looks like I cracked it which saved my phone. Too far, too far. I got one more in my pocket here. We'll launch this last one. See how close we come and then that'll be it. Yes, last one I got it. So, overall slingshot versus gun. Definitely not comparable in any way, shape, or form. And I'm gonna call it 100% that a slingshot, at least a $12 slingshot you can get from anywhere, is not gonna be typically lethal. Um, even at close range, we saw it didn't even go through the, the, the fabric on the baloney pack. It did not go through that fiber board. Um, be hard pressed to, to see where this could possibly be lethal. I mean, I'm, it's possible. There's, there's many things that are possible like that. The wrong angle, the right speed, but definitely I would not use this for anything that you're trying to kill or stop above a size of like a squirrel. Now I can say they would be a formidable weapon if you had a hundred guys with, with these and they're all shooting these steel balls in your direction. It would definitely be a suppressive force that I would not want to encounter. I'd want to leave the area. That in and of itself makes a pretty good weapon um, but yeah 
it's not really a lethal weapon. So that's what you get today. That's my test. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.